Hey everyone, it's Jennifer Zeller with John Warren. You remember from spring, he's a candy man. We're gonna start getting regular every month. If you don't remember why, I'll put the link and you can look it up. Um, but we're here today, uh, we're gonna dive in a little bit what the local market's like, and then we're gonna talk about bankers versus brokers and what that all means, different products, all that good stuff. John, how are you? Another day in paradise, how are you? <laughs> same, same. So what are you seeing in the market right now? We're seeing a lot of fear. The Federal Reserve is adamant on keeping those interest rate pressures upward. So we have seen rates kind of perpetually go up the last several weeks. You were telling me a story before about you got, got someone, you got their pre-approval or whatever the rate on Friday. What happened by Monday? Yeah, so we quoted a rate on Friday and it was an eighth of a percentage point higher by Monday morning. So rates are on the move. Whenever you get an accepted offer, it's always best to lock as soon as possible to protect yourself from the marketplace. Yeah, and are you seeing like this week, have you guys had some accepted offers or? Yeah, we're seeing a lot more buyers get accepted offers. If they don't have to write on five, 10 houses if they like a house we're seeing a lot more acceptance on that first or second go around. That's kind of what Michelle and I are seeing too. Um, we've had a couple buyers get accepted offers that you know had been in the market a while. And we also had a house go live last weekend. And when we were talking to people who put the offer in, that was kind of their situation too. They'd been there a while. And so I know some of our buyers have been shell-socked a little bit for a while, but now it's kind of time to dust that off. Um, and maybe get back out there with your agent, at least look into houses, because there's opportunities to get yourself in a home. Huge advantage. I mean, you're getting houses, you're getting home inspections. Last year, I saw that might 1% of offers, maybe. Now, almost every offer we're seeing the home inspection, we're seeing full appraisals on many. I mean, as a buyer, yes, the interest rates are higher and that monthly payment's higher, but the terms and conditions to buy the house are much, more favorable than they've been this past few years. Your parents will be a lot happier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now they feel equal. Yeah. Well, I had 9%. Yeah, you're not having an inspection or you only do it for five thousand, what? Yeah. So, um, all right, and now let's kind of dive in. Like I know there's misconceptions about banker versus brokers and what they all mean. You're with A plus mortgage. What's the exact title? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, A plus mortgage services. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of confusion. So a lot of people think of like a bank as like the physical brick and mortar locations that are close to your home. Um, maybe like an associated bank or a US bank, right? And you would be right. They are a bank. They can do loans the same as very uh, almost anyone else. Um, the biggest difference that we see is you have the bank, the physical locations. Then we have mortgage brokers, which mostly are associated with those that have access to tons of different investors to send your loan to, hopefully to get the best rates, terms, and products to set you up for success. Many times at big banks, they don't have as many products or as many investors, although they could have as many, they choose not to. So you could be limited when you're going to that brick and mortar location. Plus they have all that overhead right? All those locations yeah. cost a lot of money. They service all these different products. The, the benefit is, you know, you go to a mortgage broker, typically all they do is mortgages. So they're laser sharp on the guides and things to set you up for success. Is there a generational at all between if a generation goes more to banker or more to broker? Or do you not really see that? I would say that, you know, some of my older clients, they prefer to go into a location. It feels tangible to them. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily help them much. It really limits them to specific locations that are local to them. Okay. And so let's talk about the differences between further about bankers and mortgages. Like are, what are some of the fees associated with each? and how does that affect like your mortgage and your closing costs and things like that? Yeah, a lot of times if you go to your local bank, they'll have advertised mortgage rates that they just send out a rate table every day and the rates are the rates. There is no negotiation. They, can't, they don't really shop around. You get what they post. Um, their fees are typically fixed, everything else. You know, they'll always advertise teaser rates to try to get you in the door. 
and you know when you read the fine print you find out hey you got to do 50 percent down or you have to have a 780 credit score or you got to buy mortgage points to get the rate they're advertising uh, when you work with a mortgage broker or mortgage lender that's local to the area a lot of times they don't do that phony baloney advertising you call them you tell them your credit profile they'll give you a honed in rate anybody can pay to get a better rate so uh, a low advertised rate doesn't necessarily mean anything for you as a client you always have to look at the rate and you got to look at your costs and compare them side by side brick and mortar locations tend to charge more for their mortgages and their rates tend to be slightly higher because they have all that overhead we discussed earlier. All right. Um, I, don't know, I had a question in there. It's gone. It'll come back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know. Okay, let's talk about local versus national for either brokers or for bankers. And how, how is a client better served? And then I'll tell you how I like it better. Yeah. So, I mean, the larger a bank gets or the larger any company gets, you have to go through all these chains of command and they have all these compliance items or marketing things and all these exorbitant costs with building out a large infrastructure. So one of the things immediately working against you is there isn't a lot of leeway when things go wrong. And in real estate, lots of things can go wrong very quickly on the lending or in the real estate transaction. So working with a local lender that specifically only works in mortgages and doesn't have deposits and mm -hmm. cashier's checks and banks tellers and all these subdivided categories, they're only focused on your mortgage. So they're aware of the things that are gonna come up and can better serve you. One of the great advantages of a local lender is they typically work with local appraisals, mm -hmm. appraisers. So when you get an appraisal, it's not from some guy in Michigan that the national chain might send out. Yeah. We're getting an appraiser that actually knows the area and, and can help with either valuations or problems. Because sometimes things are overlooked by a national chain that should have been assessed. And sometimes values come in lower with those national chains because they're just not familiar with the area. So having a local lender that uses local resources is a huge benefit when you're applying for a mortgage. I agree, there are so many reasons it's huge. Like to start from the, the agent side, I know other agents, if I have a, a pre-approval come through like some national you know, company, the, the agent will often ask like, can they get locally pre-approved? Well, why would we ask that, right? Well, because and kind of like how John alluded to, it's about relationships to like your local relationships and people that you know that you know how they're going to work and they're going to work hard to get your loan through and to get it done on time if there's hiccups with the appraisal that they're going to have the people to reach out to and that i that i as an agent can get a hold of you know if you're looking working with some national lender or banker it's really rare that it's much more difficult to get a hold of them than it would be when i'm working with a plus well and you don't get the customized service i will say like in the last month we had four clients come our way that had a pre-approval in hand. And when I asked them if they ever submitted any documentation to their lender, they did not. All they did was fill out an application. Nothing was verified and they felt they had a full blown pre-approval. You can see how you'd be set up for a disaster in that case versus when you're working yeah. in a relationship based business with a local lender, no legitimate local lender is going to give you a pre-approval without putting in the work. Well, and you can see like that can really lead to heartbreak because I forgot the percentage, but it's way higher than you'd think of homes that, you know, they fall apart while they're in the transaction. A lot of times it's because of finances. Well, it's because maybe they didn't have a fully vetted pre-approval. Um, and so think about how that you as, you know, the person who's buying the house is going to feel if it falls apart because you didn't, um, you know, use a local lender. Which is why when that, when that situation happens, that's where we kind of try to get them out to our trusted our trusted uh, lenders. And I think John used another phrase I think is so important that is real estate is a relationship industry. And I think sometimes buyers don't realize you just think like it's your, you have, you have your agent, that's all. But it's really so much more than that. It's the lenders that you're working with, the appraisals that are working with, the title that we're all working with, the agent on the other side. And there, it's all about relationships. And you, as you can imagine, when you're working locally, you know, we have relationships with those people. 
Well, and you got to trust your agent. They put in the work. They vet these lenders for you, these home yeah. inspectors, the parties that are in their transactions. So they're not just throwing a name out. They don't get paid anything for referring yeah. a lender or any of their other services. It's because those are their relationships and their team that sets up successful transactions. That is so true. Like Michelle and I have a really small and a way stable of people, like our lenders that we use. But the reason that we use them is because we know that they're going to push to get it through, that they're creative if a problem arises, that we can get a hold of them. But additionally, that they have relationships, like, you know, they're a relationship person that they can make it happen. And so I think, you know, it really is like if I recommend lenders to you, use them. They're amazing. Um, but and it's not like you said it's not because i like john which i do he's very funny and fun and smart and I'm the candy man of course the candy man <laughs> which just mean he stole money from his friends for candy oh, but whatever sure. but he's really smart i love talking business with him but the main thing that i like not the main but one of the really key factors is if we send somebody to them i have a high confidence that my transaction is going to close and that's what i want for all our buyers um okay john how about if you're choosing like the different rates, like some, I think sometimes people think like there's just one rate, everybody's getting whatever the rate is. How are rates affected by bankers or brokers? Yeah, so whether it's a bank, whether it's a mortgage broker, whether it's a mortgage lender, all three different things. However, um, most of them have the ability to use multiple investors to try to get you the best rate. Um, going back to our big bank example national chain you go in u.s bank local or any local bank to you a lot of times you'll find that everything's very rigid like i said there's a rate table and that's it when you work with a mortgage lender or mortgage broker that's local a lot of times they're shopping all those investors constantly for you looking for specific programs to benefit you and give you a better rate so those big banks, they have lots of overhead, lots of costs. That's why everything's rigid and fixed. There isn't the same rate across the board because if XYZ big bank has $10 million of overhead a year, and let's say A plus mortgage, a, a place of 40 employees, our, our costs are much reduced, right? We don't have all these brick and buildings, brick and mortar buildings and all this marketing and compliance that a large chain would have. So what does that translate in? Lower cost for us means lowers cost for the buyers or the borrowers. So typically that results in lower rates, lower fees, and every broker is set up different. Some brokers have more expense, others don't. Some have better investors, some don't. So you're always going to see an array of rates. That's why it's always advised to shop. Um, just to keep your lender honest, it doesn't. it's not about them trying to pull one over you. Right. It's just day-to-day -day rates change as we talk. So if you quoted me on Monday last week to Monday yeah. this week, well, the lender that quoted you the first time is gonna look better if it was a week ago, because rates went up. So we have to put all that in context. Most importantly, you need to trust your lender, but rate and cost is what everybody needs to assess because you can pay a fee to get a lower rate. It's called discount points. If you look up any bank, right now while you're watching the video <laughs> and you will see they will have fine print next to all their advertised rates and it will normally have one discount point which is one percent of the loan so we always have to pay attention to the rate and the cost together because that's the true cost of lending interesting i didn't actually know that they did that mm -hmm. uh -huh. um what about loan products like you know we have conventional loans we have our our buyers that use FHA or uh, VAs and like are there what products you know do each offer that are similar or different? Yeah so I would say more mortgage lenders or brokers are going to have access to better programs when it comes to like VA, USDA, FHA because you need special certifications to be able to do that type of lending. A lot of banks don't offer those products. They kind of stick to the bread and butter of conventional lending, like the standard loan, um, and they don't necessarily get involved with the government loans in many instances. So um, working with your mortgage lender or broker many times can offer those products where maybe your local bank can't, and those are programs that accept lower credit scores, 
you know, income can be lower. The rates tend to be better within those programs because it's government backed. And so it could be a real disservice working with an institution that doesn't offer those programs because they might not be giving you the best product for your unique circumstances. So when somebody comes into you, do you kind of analyze all the, what all the different products and, and determine or like, like if I just came in and said I want to do conventional, but you realize, do you think about like maybe she should do FHA or how does that work? Yeah. So that comes down to not only do you want to be working with the, the right mortgage lender, bank, whoever the firm is you choose, but equally important is the person you're working with or the loan officer like myself. That loan officer has a lot of control over your app. The most common question I get is, well, do I have to fill out another application if I want to apply for FHA? No, you do not. When you apply, we can assess that application for VA, FHA, USDA, and conventional without having to reapply, normally without having to collect any additional documentation, depending on the loan product. So um, it's our job to see, do you fit in a program that's low loan amount, or do you fit in a program that is for low income? Is there a rate incentive? All these things come into play. That sounds good. Well, I think we've got, we've really delved in deep. Is there any wrapping thoughts that you want to have about banker versus broker? Or you think we covered the majority? Uh, wrap up is just make sure you get the numbers on the front end. Don't wait till you get an accepted offer to find out those closing costs or rate. Make sure your lender gives you that loan estimate on the front end, or at least a breakdown of all their costs. So if you want to check or double check with a different lender, you know the numbers before you start shopping around. And when you're shopping around, compare on the same day because our, yes. the rates are changing day to day. Same day as close as possible. Yeah. 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. is very different. So <laughs> That's true. All right, well, thank you, John. I really appreciate it. We'll see you again next month. John Warren, A-plus Mortgage, John Frizzella, Red Shoe Realtor, Abundance Real Estate. Thanks, everyone.